Hi, this is Thomas Farley. This is my second video on the Nightwear system. I hope I hope you're doing well. Or at least coping. I wish the best for you. The There's so much information. I'm not sure how to present this. I'm just going to go in and pull out what I think are the most important points from my point of view. I'm when I'm working, I am a professional writer and editor. Perhaps I take offense at this material more than I should. The when I got the watch there were now I have an Apple Watch already, so I'm familiar with this, but at least, well, several times, I stopped the recording of the device and it. I thought I pressed the stop button, but it continued to run and record and eventually essentially timed out. Very puzzling. If the wrist strap isn't tight enough, it will stop recording your heart rate you'll get a message saying there's been no heart rate detected for 10 minutes and it will stop but and I don't have the screenshots but several times at least three or four the, the buttons the, didn't work as the buttons didn't work as they should and uh, I wanted it to get right because there's this initial calibration period that they talk about. I wanted to make sure the watch was working correctly and I didn't know if it was working correctly and that's a problem with the tech support not being available at night when us nightmare sufferers are up at night and of course nothing on the weekend. So rather than getting this resolved in real time it has to wait and anyway so the watch Watch seems to be working now correctly. Uh, it stops when it should stop, starts when it should stop or start. Uh, the so uh, when I was having those events, what I did was started a dream diary. So if something like that went wrong, I noted the time so that I thought we could go back to the charts and correct them. Similarly, when it was sounding off incorrectly, like once I pulled up on the sheets too hard and it marked this thing they call an acceleration, when in fact it's just pulling up the sheets too hard. So I had this idea that I would make all these notes on these false positives, such an ugly phrase, but false positives, and then somebody at night where we would go back, correct the record so that the algorithm could learn. Because how else can the algorithm learn about an event like pulling up the sheets too hard if that only occurs every five, six days? Similarly, the literature says you can use the restroom, just take a short break, come back, and it won't affect the record. But each time I did a short break it would sound off so again noted that in my sleep log because this is the first couple days and I did actually keep a sleep log for your own records but there's nobody going there's nobody at night where that's going to go back and reconcile this the algorithm is running on its own uh, which I found out later. It's a lot of stress before I found that out. So it's actually for like bathroom behavior, uh, the Apple uh, Watch has a gyroscopic function, uh, which you may be aware of. And so it can track movement. Uh, we get out of bed, move toward the bathroom and back. So it is probably recording that event as an activity, logging it, and then over time, maybe dismissing it. But this initial calibration that I read about, apparently, 
finally got an email on this. Um, you'll get no interventions. Uh, the initial calibration period uh, lasts one to three nights after the system collected 1,000 samples. I thought with such a wide variety of activity possible at night that it would take a long time to dial in. And uh, tech support is saying it actually happens uh, in one to three nights. So the problem is you're new to the watch. You're turning it on and off. You may have really, really ragged sleep like I do. And because of that, I was turning the watch off repeatedly when I would get up for a couple of hours because I have my, my insomnia. Actually, that's probably not a good idea. I'd probably keep it on at all times because what happens is there's this 30-minute window when you hit the pillow and between that and well actually when you go to sleep when it first registers that you're sleeping it will provide none of these interventions none of these tap on the wrist for 30 minutes you're on your own for that 30 minutes and some of my worst nightmares hit me as soon as I put my head on the pillow and there's nothing to be done about that uh, tech support repeatedly claims that an improvement in that area would require FDA approval. I don't see why that would be such a problem. Perhaps it is, but it is. So what we have is adaptive technology within limitations undisclosed so that it doesn't adapt, for example, to that 30-minute window. It's not going to lower it. And it also won't adapt to if you have anything outside the criteria or the settings of what they deem a nightmare, that is your stress level, uh, measuring your heart rate, uh, your movement in bed, some other factors that I'm still not aware of. If that criteria isn't reached, then it's not going to be considered a nightmare. You will not get an alert. You will not get one of their so-called interventions. And again, without reconciling the your chart with your sleep log, it's going to be saying maybe happily that we provided five interventions when in fact they could have been false readings, false alerts, and but again, bottom line, nobody is going to reconcile your sleep record with your actual chart. What else? Yeah, I thought I was going to flip through some of this, but actually... Trying to think if there's anything important. Yeah, so that it, you know, a lot of us have nightmares that may not be the classic. You're killing somebody or somebody's killing you, but you just might be uh, having to watch, uh, I don't know, a loved one being tortured or suffering. And uh, it may be ongoing. I had a nightmare the other night where... I had lost my cat in a retail store. It's, um, Fremont is an indoor cat and had a huge store running all over the place. Can't contain him, can't collect him. And this goes on and on and on. And you would say, well, so what? It's a cat. It, you're, you're running out of a cat. But the anxiety and the stress, which just goes on and on, is just, it's, it's one of these, uh, what I would call stress dreams. And people dismiss them because they don't have the same level of anxiety that I do. Or maybe they've never had a cat on the loose and they can't find it, it's lost, you can't get it back. That's incredibly stressful. It doesn't have to be you know, chopping up people for me to constitute an extremely difficult to deal with situation. And a lot of this is the background to my sleep. And I'm really bothered by the fact that that stuff may just keep going. Now, uh, at this point, 
Um, this guy just would probably like to put me on prayers in, which has never worked for me before. One of the few dreams that are actually uh, prescribed for nightmares. I'm sure most of you have used it and know that it really doesn't work for most people because otherwise uh, the VA hospitals would be cleared of uh, PTSD victims in a hurry. But And the other thing, introducing other medicines, it, it, I don't know how you're going to tell what's working or what's not. Maybe Priazen can clear up the lower level stuff and the nightwear system can clean up the more violent stuff. Uh, it's just an experiment. Right now I'm going to end the video with those random thoughts and I hope something helps you. My email is thomasfarley at fastmail.com thomasfarley at fastmail.com and you're free to email me and now we can commiserate with this. And uh, I'm really hoping for the best for this product. And I really hope tonight that you don't have any nightmares. I really hope tonight is a good night for you. And um, let's hope that for everybody. So thank you.